talk about biosolid treatment. Biosolids are defined as the solid part of the wastewater after it leaves the treatment plant. Traditional wastewater treatment facilities generally remove the biomass, leaving some inorganic, organic, and microbial wastewater pollutants. Pollution of groundwater and surface water is a result of rain or excessive irrigation. Water washes out the contaminants from the biosolids, which has three major consequences, direct soil pollution, groundwater pollution, and surface water pollution. Contamination of the water has a variety of negative effects on the environment and living organisms. Soil pollution is an excess of an element or compound in the soil, which directly or indirectly has a toxic effect on biota. This results in unacceptable risks to the environment and human health. Contaminants can be classified into two general categories, organic and inorganic. Organic contaminants include hydrocarbons, hormones, pharmaceutical drugs, nanomaterials, and microorganisms. Enrichment of nutrients in the sludge causes eutrophication. Sex hormones are leached through runoff into surface water. This can cause variations in the sex of the fish, among other problems. E. coli contamination is primarily caused by agricultural runoff. Inorganic contaminants mainly include heavy metals, such as lead. They contaminate the soil and make it toxic for plants and animals. Biochar is useful in treating contaminated soils because it holds nutrients and pollutants. This reduces eutrophication and pollution in adjacent water bodies. Biochar is green charcoal made by the process of pyrolysis. It contains almost no or limited oxygen. It is used for many purposes and does not require the rapid mineralization of CO2. The physical properties of biochar include high porosity, water absorption capacity, and surface area. Due to these properties, it can retain more pollutants. The chemical properties include high alkalinity, high carbon content, and original organic residue. Let's see how biochar is made. Biochar can be made from different feedstocks such as animal manure, crop residue, wood chips, sugarcane byproducts, and others. The feedstock is then chipped. And then it is dried. Heating is applied in a container which restricts oxygen from entering. This process is called pyrolysis, which is a thermal decomposition of biomass. All these components make biochar. The application of biochar has three steps. First, humidification of biochar is needed to reduce the risks associated with dust. Then, biochar is applied by hand or by spouters. And finally, Uniform topsoil tillage is one example of combining the biochar with the soil. Different types of biochar can be more or less useful for different kinds of contaminants. It generally degrades contaminants through microbial activity. When dealing with heavy metals, biochar immobilizes them since they cannot be degraded. Plants above the land take in the immobilized forms of nutrients and heavy metals as needed. A meta-analysis of the available data shows evidence for the effectiveness of using biochar for wastewater treatment. It is important to note that the tests in these articles reflect the effect of biochar application on crop productivity in the soil. It is assumed that an increase in crop production shows a positive effect in the treatment of the soil. Let's look at the application rates of biochar onto the soil. The data shows that there is no statistically significant difference between the application rates of biochar. However, some rates are shown to have a significant positive effect. When comparing soil textures, biochar is most effectively used when applied on medium and coarse grain soils. When applied on fine soils, there is no statistically significant effect of biochar application. When looking at the different feedstocks used to make biochar, some feedstock sources for biochar are more or less effective than others. Biomass productivity is the effect that biochar has on the biomass that lives in the soil. When biochar is applied, the productivity of the biomass triples. Overall, biochar has a net positive effect on the soil. It increases productivity by 10%. There is, however, room for improvement. We need more long-term studies, more of an understanding on how biochar affects the soil, and an optimal method for biochar application. To summarize, Biochar is responsible for the biodegradation of organic compounds and microorganisms. 
It also removes inorganic substances from the soil due to the chub effect. This remediates the soil and leaves us with clean water. Thank you for watching!